In addition to the interviews that I like to do, I'm going to be publishing a recipe once a week that's easy to make, pairs well with wine, and is affordable for anyone's budget. Today I'm making beef koftas with deconstructed ratatouille. I, it's kind of one of those things I just threw together, um, a recipe I made up. It's gluten-free, obviously, um, falls in line with the paleo diet. Um, you don't have to use uh, rice cauliflower. You can use rice, and you can also use couscous. So um, let's get to it. I'll show you how it's done. So beef koftas begin with beef, and we like grass-fed ground beef. So that's what we do around our house. So I have actually two pounds here. Um, I would say go with a pound and a half. I'm probably just gonna cook this up because I don't want it sitting around in my refrigerator for too long. Um, so we're gonna start with this beef and we're gonna add to it um, a hefty amount of cumin. I've got these spices right here. Um, I have cumin, coriander, garlic, and red pepper flake for a little bit of heat. It's really nice in there. So I um, pre-measured this out. It's always good to pre-measure your ingredients. Um, it just goes faster and there's less cleanup time. It's good to chop everything you need ahead of time. Um, and sometimes you can meal prep and chop in advance. Um, and just put it in the refrigerator and then when, when you're ready to cook, you can just throw everything in together. Um, so I'm gonna just add everything in there really nice. I don't typically um, add a lot of salt to our meals. Andy doesn't like it, but I'm just gonna throw in a pinch of salt for this so that you can have that in there. Um, just to bring out a little bit. But um, this is the part where you need to take your rings off um, to mix. You're gonna wanna get in there with your hands. And um, show you camera two angle here. Um, so go ahead and mix with your hands. Mix it all in together really finely. Get it all incorporated. And really, you can adjust the spices and the heat as you like. I'll run them across the screen. Um, but it's really all a matter of taste. I mean, some people like more heat, some people like less. But just keep going with this and mix it all in. And we're going to add in a couple eggs to bind it all together. Um, because without the eggs, they're not gonna sit on the skewers properly before we do this. And by the way, I'm gonna be making these in the air fryer. Um, they actually work beautifully in the air fryer. I couldn't believe how well they turned out when I made these for the first time. So I'm gonna crack the two eggs in there. Now that the spices are kind of incorporate it and just again use your hands it's just better that way um, incorporates everything better and always use a big bowl like this to mix because you don't want ingredients sloshing out on the sides mix a mess and then you just have to clean it up it's not fun And I always like to be around the sink. Uh, I've got a sink behind me so that when I um, get done mixing this with my hands, I can rinse my hands off. And I don't touch it any surfaces that way. And um, lastly, we're gonna add a little bit of parsley, but save some parsley for the end uh, for plating, because it'll really make it pop on the plate. Gonna just add that in there. And then we'll 
be all finished with the heat mixture. Everything in there is really incorporated nicely. Now you could, if you want, make this up a day ahead of time and let the spices actually marinate. It's um, actually I would suggest that if you have the time. But if you don't, that's fine. You can just uh, mix it up and then place them on the skewers. So I'm gonna rinse my hands off. I have a cheap tray made up. Um, with lined foil, it's always a good idea to do that ahead of time again, and brushing around. Um, and then you're gonna take these skewers, I've pre-soaked um, these skewers in water because obviously they're wooden and you could use, if you're gonna use, um, if you're gonna use metal on, you could do that on the grill, but in the air fryer, the metal obviously doesn't break down small enough to fit into the, into the air fryer, into the, the bowl of the air fryer. The, the metal is too long, so I'm, I'm, using, um, I'm using these wooden ones because I was able to break them in half. So what we're gonna do is just start out, you know, about that much. Um, and then we're gonna take our skewers out of the water. And we're just gonna like place them on the skewers and then I just line them up on the pan. Again, just take the, you know, I don't know, um, half a cup, three quarters of a cup. Anyway, a couple of meatball sizes, put them together and uh, skewer them up. Doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to be perfect, um, but just get them kind of, kind of the same size so that they'll cook the same. They'll, um, it'll do better that way in the air fryer. And then you don't have to worry about, oh, did this one get cooked through or did this one not get cooked through or whatever. And even this part, um, you could do this ahead of time too, like before, before, it, before you cook them, dig ahead of time and then you're, you're still, you're still like marinating the spices together and the herbs and all the flavors are having a party together. I think I actually did skewer these the first time I made them. I think I did it um, a couple hours ahead of time and, I, and they just marinated together before I actually cooked them. So it kind of does benefit a little bit that way. Just little tips. Um, another tip as far as saving money that I like to do, um, I really, I know I talk about it a lot on the blog and everything and on Instagram, but I really love um, shopping, shopping grocery outlet. Um, I was able to get this rice cauliflower here um, and it comes in a big bag and it's a lot cheaper than trying to get it at a, a store and they usually always have it. it I've seen it in stock like a lot, so it's not like an item that, because sometimes a grocery outlet, you know, sometimes the items aren't available when you go back the next time, but it's typically there. Um, I usually find it. And I love shopping for wine there too, especially on Wine Wednesday. It gives me a good, good excuse to go there and check out what they have. Uh, but this is the setup, like I said, you can um, put it in the fridge just like this and marinate it like th this way, or you can go at it and just go ahead and start cooking them, and that's what we're gonna do, we're gonna start cooking them. So I'm gonna rearrange the camera a little bit, and I'll see you in a second. Okay, so you have your tray of koftas ready to go in the air fryer. I'm turn it on this way. Have our tray ready, and we're gonna plug in our air fryer. We already have it plugged in. I'm gonna go um, 
There's actually, on my air fryer, there's settings. Um, and I like to put it on the beef one. I think I just ran through it. The little beef one, it's 350. So, um, and it'll start going like that. So I let it go a little while and then um, just to let it heat the core of the thing. And then I stop it and then put the food in after that. So that's going. Um, I'm just gonna wipe the inside down with a little olive oil. It's actually avocado oil. Olive oil has like a lower smoke point than avocado does. So I'm just gonna open this bottle and take a paper towel and rub the uh, inner core before it gets too hot. That would be bad. Just, just so the kebabs don't stick. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the kebabs you've made and lay them down, lay them down in there. Lay them all around. Um, one tip for this air fryer is not to crowd the food because it doesn't cook evenly. Um, the point of the air fryer is to circulate the air. And also make sure your unit is not right against the wall uh, because it has a vent in the back and it needs that ventilation to suck in the air and to cook the food properly. So um, once again, don't crowd the air fryer. I can only put about half of these in there at a time and that's okay. So yeah. Our setting still stuck with the beef. I love this air fryer. It's a Power XL, and I didn't do a lot of research, but this was the one that was um, cost friendly and does the job. So I've cooked a lot of things in there. I cooked eggplant, um, a butternut squash. It does it a lot better than the oven. It just gets that air and makes everything crispy in there. So grab a little oil, put it in the pan. This is where prep comes into great use here. Uh, I've got my onion already chopped up. I didn't use, yeah, I used a whole onion for this, like a medium sized onion. Stirring and stick here. <laughs> Go ahead and pull my skewers out. I'm gonna just stop the cooking on that. I think they're all done. But anyway, get this going. How are you guys doing out there? Um, if you're this far in the video, you must really want to see the end of it. Want to see the process. Do a little pinch of salt, not very much. Like I said, you can always add at the end, but you can, it's really hard to take out extra salt. So, just a little dab will do you on that. So, I'm also going to throw in um, these peppers. I have red, yellow, and orange, and they're beautiful, and that's the key, I think, to healthy. Eating is there's some onions here. The key to healthy eating is color. It really is as many colors as you can. Who prepped this? this bell peppers are like huge. <laughs> so we just kind of letting that mingle together. To cook it so the you know the onions per translucent that's always what you hear in a cookbook so not going there don't let anybody escape from the pan keep going on that and 
in the meantime, I'm gonna swap out my beef kebabs and take them out. Uh, and then I'm gonna put the other ones in. And for the temperature and the time, my air fryer is at 350. But I don't really cook these a long time. We like our meat uh, medium rare. So, you know, you don't want to go too over on the time. But I think I flipped them. I think I let them go for like. Let me figure this out here. Um, I think I let them go eight minutes on, on the one side, and I just flip them for three. It's just better that way, like, just to get a little bit of browning on the other side. But this is going well, this beginning of the ratatouille here, so keep going on that. And I just made this rice blend with vegetables, and um, I didn't really call it a deconstructed ratatouille. It was Andy that pointed out to me that, that it reminded him of a ratatouille, so I was like, okay, I'll let that stick. So we're gonna add, um, some zucchini, it's a small whole green zucchini here, zucchini squash. Cook it all up. Again, color is key. Green, we got the green, we got the orange, we got the yellow, reds, reds, whites. Just some really good stuff. Put an eye also on the air fryer, make sure we don't overcook that beef. And I'm sorry, um, I'm left-handed, so this might be really visually annoying to the right-handers out there. I know it probably looks awkward, but uh, I do what I can to make you uncomfortable. Just kidding. Um, we're going to add an eggplant. Um, this isn't a whole eggplant, I just use half because. Basically, if you use too many vegetables, you're not even going to be able to see the rice happening. So, just going to add that in. And we're also going to be overcrowding our pan and everything's going to go everywhere. So, that's not good. Let everything cook down a little bit more before we add anything else. After about five or ten minutes, this should be cooked down enough. Uh, and then we're going to add our rice in. I'm going to add that in. And uh, I'm going to flip these kebabs over here. Cooked. So um, that's why I did the order that I did. And 
also, if the rice hadn't been cooked, I probably would have thrown it in even before you had it. But it's just a matter of um, what you prefer and how done you like your vegetables as well. So I'm going to give this one little last stir. Make sure everything's incorporated. And you know, if you don't like a particular vegetable in this recipe, you can leave it out. Uh, I'm not going to knock on your door and make sure you made it <laughs> the way that I had, I exam, you know, had an example for. But uh, if you don't like everything, heck, leave it out. Just or substitute something you do like. So the last ingredient you're going to add after you've added the cauliflower is Go ahead and drain these really quickly. We don't really need all that water in there, so. Add those in. Go ahead and cut your heat. arrangement of colors so that's great see the herbs on top that looks really good well now that we're all done cooking we're gonna sit down and have a nice wine pairing so I'm here to show you what I've selected is uh, this replica wine it's a 2019 Cabernet Sauvignon And a little bit about this label, um, their wine labels are designed with the Zero Seas Butterfly. And the, the thing about the butterfly is, is that this Zero Seas species is the one that um, went extinct because of man, what man did to the earth. And so this, this butterfly was wiped out, essentially. 
Um, so very beautiful label, um, very, very delicious wines that I've had. We had some of the Chardonnay in our last, uh, in our last video table talk when I interviewed my husband. So um, cheers, I'm gonna taste this delicious wine and tell you my opinion about it. The nose is just lovely. Um, first of all, it's just a lot of times I get disappointed if I can't smell anything but on a wine, but this time it's it's um it's really delicious. Um, you get a lot of berries, a lot of red fruit. Um, the color is just gorgeous. Um, I'm gonna read a little bit about the wine. Um, one thing that I love slash dislike about this is that they have the, the um, nutrition facts on the label, which is something when I'm, when I'm enjoying a beverage, I would rather not know. But on the other hand, if you're trying to lose weight or trying to track your calories, um, you know, you want to know what you're drinking. So uh, it's good to have something uh, serving size wise and um, okay, say if I drink half this bottle, I'm having this many calories. So um, this is a good shareable, you know, a wine bottle is always fun to share with um, with someone else. Or if you just want to drink a glass a day and keep it in the fridge and bring it out an hour before you um, intend to drink it, that's good too. It's always a good tip. But, um, A little bit why, um, a little bit about why I chose this pairing is because Cabernet traditionally really does go with beef very, very well. Um, you know, bringing the the beef koftas back into the picture here. Um, it's just gonna, uh, it just envelopes and bodies the beef. Um, they play well together. The deep flavors of the Cabernet and the deep flavors of the grass-fed beef, which by the way, grass-fed's the way to go on this one. So um, I think you can really taste a difference in grass-fed beef. Um, so this wine, it just says California on it. When, when a wine label says California, like 2019, it means that the grapes were harvested in 2019. And it's... Uh, they were probably sourced all over California since it's just California on it. It doesn't say like Lodi or Amador. So they're gonna just probably source the best grapes they can and, and put them in a blend together. But these are all Cabernet grapes, obviously. So um, the wine is 14.4% alcohol. So, um, you know, fairly mid-level for a Cabernet. And what I do like about Replica Wines is that they are committed uh, to protecting the environment. And that's something that we, you know, need to, need to be aware of and need to continue to do is protect the environment. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like this video if you want to see more like it. And please subscribe to my channel. I'll be doing... As I said, um, I'll be doing an interview and then I'll be doing a recipe and hope to um, intersperse the two. And uh, we'll see you again next time. Cheers.